Hi everyone, I hope you're doing okay today. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mark and as part of this new preaching series that we've just started at Hope Church on who God is, uh, I've been asked to do a short talk on one of God's attributes. So after thinking about it for a little bit, I thought it'd be good for us to look at God as our provider. Now this is actually a topic that's really at the forefront of my mind at the moment uh, because I'm on furlough from my job like many of yourselves and my work situation is feeling kind of precarious so it's been really great for me to look at this topic and uh, I hope it blesses you too. I also think at times like these when life is tough it's really great to spend a little bit of time looking at who God is because when we can see life in the context of a God that loves us and a God that cares intimately about our situation and what's happening to us, uh, then it's just much easier to push through the next few days or weeks that we have ahead of us. So what I thought we'd do is take a look at how God has provided in the past by looking at some examples of his provision in the Bible um, just as a reminder of what he's done before. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about a story that I've seen recently on, uh, on the internet, on YouTube, uh, which I think provides an amazing example of uh, how God is still providing today. And then end with my own testimony of God's provision uh, in my own life. Um, so great, let's, uh, let's look at what the Bible says. So I probably don't need to tell you uh, the, the Bible is absolutely jam-packed, full of examples of God's provision for his people in really quite extraordinary ways. Uh, whether it be manna from heaven when the Israelites were stuck wandering out in the desert, or uh, the pot of never-ending oil that God gave to Elisha for the widow that needed to repay her debts. Um, or even the rescue of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego from that fiery furnace that the king had them thrown into. Or as uh, Tony spoke about recently, the uh, feeding of the 5,000 uh, when Jesus was preaching and people needed to eat. Uh, God managed to make that amazing meal from those loaves and, and fish. There are so many examples of God showing up com and completely transforming people's lives by providing just what they needed exactly at the time that they needed it. Now, this provision, uh, this provision to people probably won't come as a surprise to you if you've been a Christian for any length of time. These stories form an integral part of our faith. But how many times do we find ourselves worrying about whether God will provide? We have all these past examples of God's provision, but yet we so often find ourselves looking at a problem and not being able to see how God's going to come through and uh, meet our needs. One of my favourite verses in the whole Bible is uh, Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34, which is a really great uh, verse about God's provision. And I'd, I'd like to read it for you now. Um, so if you've got your Bible handy, um, perhaps turn to Matthew 6, verse 25 and uh, follow along. So it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, 
What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So we can see that not only does the Bible give us lots of examples of God's previous provision, but Jesus has himself actually promises us, promises us that he will provide. And this isn't an empty promise from just an ordinary man. This is a promise coming from the lips of God himself. I don't know about you, but that kind of blows my mind. But even with all these past examples and promises uh, spoken by Jesus himself, sometimes it can be really difficult in the heat of the moment not to think, you know, not to doubt that God will come through for us. You may even be sitting there right now watching this thinking, well, that was all in the past and uh, God's never, never given me and my mates 5,000 free fish and chip meals. Well, one thing that I saw recently, which, as I said before, is a great example of God providing right here and now, was um, a little YouTube clip uh, that was posted uh, by a guy called uh, Pastor Lee McKellen from Belfast. I'm sure many of you have already seen it, but if you haven't, I'd really encourage you to check it out. It's a great example of God providing right here, you know, in this time that we're in. We'll try and link it down below so that you can just click on it and go and take a look. Um, but if we're not able to do that, just go and search for Pastor Lee McKellen's testimony and it comes up really quickly. In the short video, he talks about being in hospital with coronavirus and how he's feeling absolutely awful and he's not sure if he's going to make it through the night. And he cries out to God and says, you know, God, I just need some encouragement. I just need need, need something to keep me going. And um, so God provides for him. He, he sends a cleaner. Um, and after a bit of a chat, it turns out that this cleaner um, had been a missionary out in Nigeria. Um, and he's now returned and is cleaning this hospital. Um, and I just thought that, that was amazing, you know. Even in this isolation ward, this, this place where no one's supposed to be able to get to him, God can, God can get through and, and God can still meet our needs, even when it seems nearly impossible. This testimony just really, really blew my mind, really got me excited. And I'm sure there's, as you think about it, you can probably think of your own testimonies in the past where where God has provided for you. Um, one example of my own life um, happened a couple of years ago uh, when I lost my job overnight. Uh, one day I had a job and the next I didn't. As some of you will know, I'm an aircraft engineer by uh, training and uh, I recently worked for an airline called Monarch. Um, as some of you would have seen on the news, uh, Monarch had been struggling for a little while, but uh, when I joined, it was it was going on, and uh, you know everything seemed to be okay. Um, however, after a pretty normal day at work, I came home, had a meal with my family, went to bed. My uh, my work phone started ringing at three in the morning, and uh, when I picked it up, it was. One of my colleagues sounding really panicked, saying to me, Mark, Mark, you need to read your emails. And uh, my initial reaction was, no, it's three in the morning. I don't need to read my emails. But he, he encouraged me and uh, eventually I, I opened it up and there was an email from our CEO basically saying, don't come to work tomorrow. Our, our last flight's just landed. We're no longer going to be going to be in business and um and that really really impacted me you know this uh, once strong vibrant company 
overnight it just disappeared and I no longer had a job. But anyway, over the next few weeks, God provided for me and my family in amazing ways. Uh, I, I'd only been out of work for about a week and uh, he provided me with contract work. And within two or three weeks after that, I got another job. Um, and yeah, it was just amazing how God came through for us as a family. Now, some people might say, well, that was just luck, but the way in which it happened made me absolutely sure that God's hand was on it. And yeah, it was just such an incredible time of uh, seeing God's provision uh, at work. So our God is a provider and he cares hugely about every single one of us. We can trust him to provide for us, not only in our time of greatest need, but also in our daily lives too. As he said in that verse, we don't need to worry. Sometimes it can be hard for us to do that, but we want to feel in control and uh, we want to know that we're in control of what happens to us, but, but he wants us to trust him to provide. When things are going well, as well as when it feels like the walls of life are crumbling down around us. So if you're going through a tough time at the moment with everything that's happening, can I challenge you now to, to put your trust in him and to choose that he, he won't let you fall? He will provide for you and he wants to provide for you. In fact, one thing that I found really helpful is uh, if you write down uh, problems or things where you're, you're struggling to, to see his provision, just, just write them down and, uh, and pray them back to him. Uh, and then when he answers your prayer, you can write down how, how he answered your prayer. And then you can use that as a testimony in the future or, or as a way of reminding you how he has provided for you. I know that's what I'm going to be doing during these challenging times that we have coming up ahead. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick look at God as our provider. Uh, I had a really great time looking into this while I prepared this little talk for you. Um, and I know it really encouraged me. So I hope it's encouraged you as well. So uh, yeah, thank you, Lord, that you are our provider. And um, that's it. So I hope to see you all soon. And uh, yeah, it'd be really great to catch up. Uh, so goodbye.